So let's welcome Laura Lynn from uh, UPS. She's the president of uh, the public affairs from UPS, United Parcel Services, right? And she would take over and moderate the discussion on customs modernization. Please, ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Laura Lynn. Laura, have my seat. You know what? We're all about on-time delivery, and I know we need to keep on schedule, so I'd like to invite all of our panelists to come on up, um, and that way we can go right into the heart of the matter. And I will say for the minister, you pick the best panel to stay at because you have an incredible custom service that is doing amazing work to modernize customs, and um, we're pretty excited to be able to talk about all that's happening in here in Ghana because it's such a model for the rest of the ECOWAS countries to follow. So, yeah. The minister offered us his deputy minister, so let's invite him. Honorable Robert Ahum okay. all right, because they have the trade facilitation committee at the ministry. Please clap for the deputy minister, you know. And you can only do this if, you, if you've ever worked at Coca Cola, so I have the license to bring him. <laughs> should, we, um, sh should we have you? I'll just sit at the end. I'm going to just begin really quickly and just share. Um, uh, my name is Laura Lane, and I'm vice, uh, I'm, uh, vice chairman of the President's uh, Advisory Council for Doing Business in Africa. And we have been on an incredible journey going from Ethiopia to Kenya to Cote d'Ivoire and now here to Ghana. And I can uh, definitely say, with respect to the issues of, of customs modernization, we so save the best for last because there's some really exciting work being done here in Ghana with respect to customs modernization. And um, I, I know my colleagues on the council will know I'm a little bit of a broken record about it, but the reality is the buck stops at the borders. All trade and investment um, depends on a, a modern customs system. And um, UPS knows this. We operate in 220 countries and territories. We carry over 3% of global GDP in our airplanes, in our cargo holds, in our containers that go on ocean vessels and that are get carried in our tractor trailers. And so everything that happens at the borders is so important, not just for UPS, but for every company that engages in trade or investment. And so I'm really excited to be moderating this panel. In the interest of time, what I thought I'd do is just turn to each of the folks on the panel to capture their perspective on why trade uh, facilitation and customs modernization is so critically important. Um, and, and that way we can begin the dialogue and we'll try to leave about five, 10 minutes for questions if that sounds, sounds good. So I'm gonna turn it over to you. Um, and, and what I ask is that everybody self-introduce, um, you know, share your name, your background, and then um, move into why trade facilitation matters. So. Uh, good morning, Honorable Minister, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, our colleagues from the U.S. government and our Ghana partners. My name is Emmanuel Wampo. I'm from the U.S. Customs and Border Protection and I serve as uh, an advisor on the Security Governance Initiative for the Government of Ghana. And within the U.S. Customs as well, I serve as the nucleus for trade facilitation, trade capacity building, and our immigration and counterterrorism efforts within the international operations of U.S. Customs. I'm excited to be in Ghana. I've actually been working, with, we have been working with Ghana for so many years. Um, SGI is just a new area of engagement with Ghana. We started with Ghana way, I think, 15 years ago when we launched the West Africa Border Security Initiative. We made Ghana the center of our operations and engagement with the rest of West Africa. We have also extended that operations to dream with not just trade, but all cross-border threats. So um, without taking much of your time, uh, trade facilitation is important. Within the, while we focus, you hear about CDP focus more on immigration, 
either on border protection. We are still customs. We are the number two um, revenue generating agency for the United States government. And we take our mission very seriously. We ensure that the movement of goods and the movement of people across, across our borders are made as simple and easy as possible. However, we also ensure that it's done securely. With that understanding and experience that we've gained over the United States, we are working with Ghana, primarily in West Africa, and other partners in Africa, to ensuring that when your trade and when your goods are moving across the supply chains, that they are safe. We believe that building this partnership with each of these countries enables us to focus more on our internal security needs. And where Ghana is a strong partner and an investment hub for the United States government and United States uh, businesses, we are working to make sure that the, the, that the skills and best practices that we develop what we share with Ghana, that Ghana will in turn share that with the rest of the region. Um, let me stop there for now and, and thank you. I'm going to turn it over to someone who um, we just had the opportunity to meet with the uh, Deputy Commissioner of Customs who, um, if this is uh, a role model for the next generation, he, he definitely is that role model because he's making trade simpler. He's making trade more effective and a lot of the economic gains are happening because of a lot of the programs and processes he's implementing. He just shared with us in a meeting beforehand about the uh, additional changes that have been made uh, starting on July 1. This is someone who is committed to trade facilitation and is making it happen. So let me turn it over to you, Deputy Commissioner. I'm Seth Gura, Deputy Commissioner, Customs Operations. Honorable Minister of Trade, representative of U.S. Chamber of Commerce, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. The government priority is Ghana's trade beyond aid, the vision. And for it, this to be successful, then customs should be modernized. Clearing of goods at the ports shouldn't be cumbersome. The procedures should be minimized to the barest minimum. And this is what custom is exactly doing. The vice president launched a project on port efficiency. And that included three thematic areas. Clearance of all customs barriers within the transit corridor. Because we know that there are landlocked countries, Burkina Faso, Niger, Mali, they get their goods from Ghana. And if there are interruptions, before the goods get there, they will be time wasted, there will be cost in the processes, and so many things. So to make it efficient, the Vice President advocated, and it has been implemented, that was September last year, all customs barriers has been removed. Secondly, the issue of paperless. Hitherto, paper was moving from one freight station to the other freight station. But as we are speaking now, the whole port has been interconnected and it is paperless. So when you are clearing goods at the port today, time is not wasted. There is efficiency at the port and you can clear your goods within the shortest possible time. Number three was joint examination. There are so many departments and institutions which either two were examining goods at the port with customs. There were about 20 customs were examined the other agencies will come in. It was advocated that there should be joint inspection, and joint inspection started last year. There was room for improvement. It was found out that the companies, the institutions were many. So now 
all the companies have been embedded into only two institutions. That is Food and Drugs Authority and then Ghana Standard Board. So these two agencies will examine goods in addition with customs. And this really facilitates trade. When we come to scams, you know, intrusive examination was a major problem because all the goods in the container will be stuffed out before customs officers will examine. We found out that it constituted delays at the port, so non-intrusive examination in the way of scanners were introduced. And scanned goods takes about 60% of goods that exit the post. We just risk profile the companies, and then those which are risky are on the red channel. Red channel, we conduct intrusive examination but if you attack green, we don't conduct examination, and this is a way to expedite trade. So that when money is not wasted at the port, when time is not wasted at the port, then business will boom and it will call so many investors into the country. The ripple effect will be unimaginable. I think I'll end here. So. I'm going to, um, with, with your permission, I would like you to have the last word. Uh, so I'm going to turn to Lisa uh, Schroeder from uh, Dow to um, talk about that perspective of how critically important trade facilitation is from the business side um, and, and share some of the experiences as a member of the PAC DBIA um, as well as from the broader business community perspective. Um, and before you do, though, I just want to say again that, um, you know, the Deputy Commissioner Commissioner's work truly has been about taking, you know, time and complexity out of trade. And when you, uh, you know, advance those kind of programs and processes, more trade happens. And so the role of the council is to find ways to really showcase the great work you're doing and show the results by bringing more trade here to Ghana and partnering with more Ghanaian businesses. So Lisa, let me turn it over to you to talk about that perspective. Oh, thank you, Laura. And thanks to everyone, honored friends and partners in Ghana's true development. Uh, my name is Lisa Schroeder. I'm the Global Director of Trade and Investment Policy for the Dow Chemical Company. And as just a really quick preview, Dow is about to, in 2019, celebrate 60 years of history operating here in Africa. Uh, we've been providing products to our Ghanaian customers since the 1980s and sourcing direct innovation with our rep office that opened here six years ago. I highlight that because it speaks to what Laura's talking about, how we really can play a role, not just looking at customs as moving products, but really building markets. And I'll make two very quick points. One is about partnership, and the second is about economic competitiveness. Um, and with congratulations to, Ghanaian, to the Ghanaian Customs Department and the Ministry of Trade and Industry for all the work that's been done to date, the single window and everything uh, that these officials have described today really demonstrates what a commitment there is to going forward. Um, and I think particularly from the perspective of a PAC DBIA member, we'd welcome that opportunity to be part of the next stage, which is really mo moving trade facilitation into that global value chain space. You know, for us, a great next step would be um, stakeholder consultation and increasing the transparency of the process really helping to give custom, uh, companies like mine, as well as custom, uh, customers and companies operating here in Ghana, a role in the process. There's a lot of expertise that we can offer when you think about particularly our industry and product line. Dow is already very engaged working with local customers through our Product Stewardship Academy to help build better understanding of safety, security, and life cycle management of our products. That same expertise that we bring to our local customers here can be part of capacity building for customs officials, particularly understanding the products that we're bringing in and the long-term value that they, would add, they will add to Ghana's economy as well as the broader region. I do live literally in the global village. We have opportunities here to shine, but we must make sure that my colleagues, the customs teams and the port, frankly, are best in class not just in West Africa, but globally, because we are working in a global competitive environment 
And if we want to invite businesses to put their value chain, which I believe was one of the areas that was mentioned by Dow, then our trade facilitation mechanism must be an enabler, not a hindrance to that value chain. And to the extent that we may get all the wonderful policies in place, but as I said, the container or the shipment gets stuck, then your value chain breaks down and we're not able to achieve anywhere we want to go. So the gist of my contribution is that this government is very clear on some of its ambitious goals and the trade facilitation element becomes a key component and what you see is as a result of the direction, of the clear direction and the clear belief that incremental changes in itself is not going to get us to where we need to go. So therefore, we need to transform, hence the transformative processes um, being put in place. And we're keen to learn about some of the IT, because um, some of the solutions, paperless, we know it's, a, it's not in itself uh, an end to a means. There is more to it. Uh, selective processing becomes important. So we're keen to, to learn what that comes in, and as a Minister of Trade Industry, how that can enable us to, frankly, be top in class. Because our aspiration is to be a gateway. And to be a gateway, the door has truly to have to be a gateway. While we will not skimp and diminish the importance of security and ensuring that what comes into our country and goes out meets our WTO obligations, at the same time, that door must flow freely, both in and out, in terms of where we are. So, Congratulations to everybody here on the ground. We're keen to answer any questions, but the focus is on the transformation, and the transformation also includes our trade facilitation transformation. Fantastic. Thank you for those awesome comments. Um, I, think, I think we have time for one or two questions, and um, I, I, uh, I just wanted to pick up on what you, um, you, you touched on. One of the important aspects of uh, trade facilitation, people often think, oh, customs, it's only about businesses. But it's also about bringing uh, benefits to uh, the Ghanaian community. Um, and one area that I think about is in the healthcare sector, particularly. I remember UPS was very involved in terms of combating the Ebola crisis um, across West Africa. And it was so frustrating in other countries where we would be bringing in and life-saving, uh, you know, uh, medical supplies and, and needs, and they'd be stopped at the borders. And um, it was very frustrating in that regard. And so where uh, customs modernization and trade facilitation is so important, especially, is when it comes to that health sector. And I know I have a fellow PAC DBIA member in the audience here from Amethyst Technologies, Kimberly, uh, Kimberly Brown. I don't know if you wanted to maybe um, uh, ask uh, one of the first questions, because Customs is so critically important for your industry sector. So let me turn it over to you to ask the first question, and then we'll take one more question in the audience. And so um, if you can, just raise your hand, and I'll try to scope you out. I can be can-do. Here you go. Good morning. So Amethyst Technologies, we provide services for pharmaceutical manufacturing. We also currently support Mac Health Pharmaceuticals based in Ghana, which is focused on being one of the first organizations to meet US FDA standards for pharmaceutical manufacturing. Definitely acknowledge the minister's comments about pharmaceutical manufacturing. Ghana has 35 pharmaceutical companies, is well positioned to create jobs, um, develop high quality pharmaceuticals. One of the challenges is um, substandard and counterfeit drugs that um, get into the market. So what type of information technology initiatives are you implementing to look at um, gathering data, intelligence information on uh, organizations that historically 
develop and um, import substandard pharmaceuticals into um, the market in Sub-Saharan Africa. Um, and definitely we acknowledge that FDA has developed a laboratory, um, increased their abilities to provide testing, has become ISO accredited, um, but testing only identifies very gross, grossly uh, incompetent and um, inferior products. Thank you. So, um, Mr. Deputy Commissioner or Emmanuel, did you want to maybe touch on that? Because that's an area of great partnership where, um, you know, it's a, it's a U.S. priority to stop counterfeit and um, opioids, for example, uh, from entering into the U.S. And I know that um, some of the risk assessment uh, analysis that's going in there can track some of those counterfeits coming in. So maybe I'll turn it to both of you to answer that question. Do you want to? Oh, I can think on that. Um, uh, good morning once again. Um, one of, we've done a great deal of assessment into the threats facing Ghana across their borders. And one of the issues that we, may, we found is the counterfeit drugs that comes into Ghana. Not to take away from the drug narcotics that comes into Ghana or through Ghana. And also we have also looked at the gaps and the capabilities of Ghana to be able to dictate and uh, interdict these efforts. And also the technology that could be applied into that. Within the United States, we do have, within our customs, labs that are stationed across the country for testings. We also have small kits that we have provided. We provide our officers right at the frontier to be able to test some of the products coming in that we don't need to take to the labs. But more importantly, we rely on the capabilities and intelligence and human intelligence to be able to dictate that at first order. Those who, pro who manufacture counterfeit uh, products, be it drugs, be it other products, they are very good at doing that. The same way, we, have, we invest a lot in training our officers to use their human intuition into dictating this. We also work with our partners overseas. We track products. We're able to share with our partners, partner countries, the origin of their product, the shipment, the movement of the ships, the cargo, the containers. We have the capability to be able to tell any product that came from any part of the world and be able to tell where, it, where it's been, how far it's traveled, and we can share those kind of technology and information with Ghana. We have a, what we call a customs mutual assistant, assistant with Ghana that enables us to share this sort of high level intelligence. And uh, with US investors coming into Ghana, I'm sure the CBP would be more inclined into putting this kind of assistance and partnership uh, in effect. Thank you. Customs, we are doing so much to counter counterfeit drugs being smuggled into the country. Recently, Netherlands government gave us four mobile vans, lab vans, and we send them to the frontier stations. And we are going to use drones in the frontiers. Because we've seen that human beings are liable to some negatives. So recently, there was a company which approved us. The tests have been done. We are going to send drones to some of the very porous border points so that the imaging will be analyzed on source smuggled goods will be intercepted. There has been a collaboration with Ghana Immigration Service. That is Customs Joint, but, um, Ghana Immigration and Customs Border Management. Because we are the two agencies who man the borders, the primary agencies. There are other agencies, but we are the primary agencies. So we sign an MOU. There has been agreement between Customs and Immigration. We will share information and we will get, we will work together. So combating fake drafts and then small arms to their country 
All this will be tracked. Castle officers have been trained to man these frontiers. The preventive session is working tirelessly to make sure that uncustomed goods do not enter the country. The security initiative that we have with the United States of America is working very well. Now we have the K-9 units. We have dogs that have been trained to get fake drugs, to get currency being smuggled into the country, to get narcotics. We finish the training, we are going to deploy all these canine dogs to the frontiers, to the airport, to the seaport, and to make sure that it will be very difficult to smuggle weapons, fake drugs, currencies into the country. So we are, we are at war with those smugglers and nation wreckers who want to destroy the gains that we've made so far. Thank you very much. I wanted just to point, uh, and it fits in very well, these issues become easier to manage when you identify early down the system. And so a core part of the paperless system is around identifying, and my colleague in customs talked about the tagging. I believe red is the one that is the most issue. So we identify those types of imports or those types of goods that have a high potential risk of X, Y, and Z, including uh, pharmaceuticals. We have a particular challenge here in Ghana currently on textiles, where a number of people are bringing in fake or pirated textiles. Um, we talked about other illicit goods. And these are highlighted the day that container leaves what, wherever it is coming to. And it is highlighted on the systems here and that is the preventative part that gives us an opportunity not to search 50 containers, but the three. <laughs> and the 47 can go through because the three are potentially high risk. And that becomes very, very important because that's when we can get the dogs, we need the intel, we need the, the IT systems to allow us to do that. And that is an important component. So there is a security component in the paperless system. It is not just a question of filling the forms and that's it. No, we need to make sure, and I did mention that while we safeguard our borders, we still got to make sure that we use both technology and intelligence. Uh, the example I always think about is um, when you go through customs. There was a time, not too long ago, those of us have been traveling where every single person was searched when you go through the airport. Everybody was searched. Today, I don't know why, but I'm sure I have an idea, they know exactly who to search because before you've got on the plane, they've got all your details, they know where you're coming from, they've got a sense what you're likely to carry, and that is a better use of the scarce resources. And also not to stop, not to have a long queue of people going through the customs at the airport. So that intelligence element that comes in becomes important, and that is where we need to work closely with the associations. That is where we need to work closely with you to help us also as government to put together some of these institutions, some of these checks um, on the ground to help us. So just because UPS and Antrac are all about on-time delivery, we're going to close out the panel. Um, I know that there may be other questions, but for me, there's only lots of answers, and it's just a question of how quickly they can implement them all. So let me um, ask everyone to give a warm round of applause for this awesome panel on customs modernization. And I think there's going to be a five-minute break before the next panel comes on. And uh, thank you for being as excited about the topic as we all are. Please put on together once again for them. Thank you very much, Laura and the team. And it will just be five minutes. The next one is equally very important. It will be on railways and housing. So we'll see you in five minutes.